today I want to do a video on how to get a Fulbright. So for those of you who don't know, I just got the Fulbright scholarship to the Czech Republic and I'm going to the Czech Republic in January and I will be teaching at a business academy. So that's like a high school in the Czech Republic. So kind of an overview of how to receive a Fulbright. In March, April, you should probably start the process of thinking about where you want to apply to um, and all of your application materials. And then in July, August, you should have a rough draft of your essays and you should already be asking your recommenders to write you letters. Then at the end of September, you should be submitting your application to the university or college you attend. And when you submit this application, your university is going to go over um, your essays and all the requirements and they're going to give you feedback on what they think you should do with the application. And then by October, you should have your whole entire application into Fulbright. So that's just kind of a rough overview. And then I'm going to go into some more things in detail. So first off, a lot of people um, ask what, uh, like what makes me eligible for a Fulbright? So first off, you need to have a pretty good GPA. Um, most places that I've seen recommend a 3.5 or above on a four point scale. Secondly, you want to have a language ability. So if you go to a country, let's say Spain, uh, you want to know how to speak Spanish if you're going to be teaching English. Um, this is not for all countries. In the Czech Republic, for example, you don't need to have a language requirement because not many people in the US actually know how to speak Czech. Um, but for most countries you do and you have to be able to prove that you have um, that ability and uh, that ability will also come in handy when you go to interview for the Fulbright. You're going to want to make sure that you have three solid recommenders. So if you have teachers you really like or employers that really like you, you should be asking them well ahead of time uh, for their recommendations. Now, once you have um, your eligibility and you know that you can do this, you think you're a good candidate, the key thing in the Fulbright process is picking a country that is going to be good for you. Um, this was, I would say, very difficult um, because you're going to want to match your kind of personality, things you like, with the country. So reasons why I chose the Czech Republic is... The Czech Republic loves ice hockey. Um, that is like their big sport. That is something that they can all get behind. In college, I played on my college. I played on my college's ice hockey team. So in my essay, I wrote about how ice hockey um, and the team building there and the community was so good for me, and I want to bring that same mentality to the Czech Republic. Um, I also wrote about how my family immigrated here from Europe and how I wanted to go back and I wanted to see my family's roots and explore Europe in a capacity that I never have done before. So after you figure out some reasons about why you want to go to that country and why you think that country would want you as a Fulbright, you should probably start writing your statement of grant purpose and your personal statement. So each of these essays is just one page long, but it takes a very long time to write them. Um, you want to fit in a lot of information, but say it extremely concisely. You want to make it personal, but you don't want to make it too personal. Um, so I recommend when writing these you do a lot of self-reflection and you also use your resources so d within this whole Fulbright application you really have to create a Fulbright application team um, create your support team know who to go to when you have different questions know who's really good at proofreading your essays um, and things like that and that is really going to help you I also think that it was really important for me to talk to people who have already done the Fulbright. So talking to people who are alumna of the Fulbright program, I think is really important. They can give you a lot of insight on how the Fulbright works, their experience, what they learned and how it's impacted them today. And this information you can use um, when creating your essays in your application. And that really helped me. Um, and then something else that you should think about is your background. So do you have a lot of background in teaching or is it mostly research? 
Um, and then this background can help inform you if you want to apply to be an ETA or if you want to um, apply to do a research grant. Um, additionally, you should always look at the country's um, recommendations for your eligibility. So some countries, they want you to have, let's say, two years of teaching experience when other countries don't really care about that and they just want to make sure that you can speak English. Lastly, you're going to want to look at what type of institution you would be teaching at when you're on your Fulbright. For example, some countries only have Fulbrights in middle schools, some have them in colleges, um, and some have them in high schools. So if you don't want to teach in middle school and you only want to teach in high school, then I would recommend applying to a country that you will only be teaching in the college, not the middle school realm. So I think that's all the tips from me, but if you would like to read my statement of grant purpose or my personal statement, just comment below and I will give you the links to those. Um, I did get the Fulbright, as I said before, so I would say that they're pretty good um, to use as a tool. Um, and if you want me to make another video about this, I definitely can. Just comment below, like, subscribe. Thanks.